What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to check out a tool for SketchUp that allows you to report out areas so that you can get quantities from directly within your SketchUp model. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right. So as a lot of you know, in my day job, I'm a construction estimator. And a lot of what I do is I spend a lot of time figuring out how much quantity of material I have so I can figure out costs. So in this case, for example, this is an example model. This is one of the live components that I've detached from the 3D warehouse from SketchUp. And what I might wanna do is I might wanna figure out some things about the quantities in this model. So this is the part of the video where I stop and tell you, you need to be very careful about the way you pull quantities out of a SketchUp model. Generally, what we're gonna do is we're going to use the area of materials inside of a SketchUp model to figure out how much area of an object there actually is. I recommend doing some double checks or something like that on a 2D set of plans as well, just to make sure that you're getting everything out properly because it's really easy to make mistakes and errors. Now, what I could do is I could come in here and select and start selecting individual faces, right? But that gets really weird with like groups and other things like that. I just wanna figure out how much of this siding material I have in my model and some other things as well. Luckily, there's a tool contained inside of Fredo 6's free Fredo Tools extension that allows you to quickly report out areas from your SketchUp models. When you first activate the tool, um, it's going to actually be inside of this Fredo Tools launcher. So when I click on the launcher and I scroll down, there's a bunch of different tools in here. And in this case, I specifically want to click on the option for report on areas. So what report on areas is going to do is it's going to do exactly what it sounds like. It's going to give me a report of the different areas that I have in this model of different kinds of materials. So you can figure out areas of materials in different layers, or they would be tags now, it just hasn't been updated to say that, or by container, which gets a little bit interesting because you can actually report materials out based on the different parts and pieces. I mostly use the by material. Um, but what this does is this basically gives me a report of the materials in the model. So in this case, for example, I have 440 square feet of shingles. So I could take that and apply that to an estimate. Now, there's some things to be aware of when you're using this tool. One thing, for example, is notice how I've got this little short retaining wall at the moment. And this is something to kind of be aware of when you're doing quantities in SketchUp at any point. Um, but if I was to select this, right, notice how this is a cinder block material. But if I look in this report, there's no cinder block material under materials. The reason for that is because the faces are oriented improperly inside of this model and the cinder block material has been applied to the backside of the faces here. So if I was to use my styles toolbar, which you can activate by right clicking and going into styles. If I was to click on this option right here for monochrome, notice what that's gonna do is that's going to show me the front and back side orientation of faces in the model. Well, notice how this right here is facing the wrong direction. And so if I was to select this surface right here and look at it over on the right hand side, notice how in the front facing slot, this actually has a red material applied to it. The cinder block is applied to the back. Well, that means that if I run this material and I try to get a quantity out of here, it's going to be inaccurate because that material is not in the material section. It's on the back facing material. So what we would need to do is we would need to come in here and we would need to flip these faces. So what we would do is we would select them, right click and do a reverse faces, right? Well, now if I go back into textured mode, notice how this has a red material applied to it. Well, I would want to make sure that we go in and we apply the cinder block material to the front sides of those faces. Now we would have to go back in and refresh our report now that we've chained that, changed that, but notice how that material is going to now show up on the front side face. And I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this so that I can see the whole model. Note that you can select individual areas like this and run the report if you only wanna see the materials that are applied there. So front and back materials are really important within your model. I've gone so far as to downloading this TIG reversed face tools from Sketchication. And there's actually a tool in here for delete back materials. And I like to delete out all of the back facing materials so that I'm not accidentally pulling in materials from the back sides of faces. So now if I refresh this, notice how it's gonna run. And this is gonna show me that my back materials are all default materials. So I can't really be missing any materials. Um, and I would just have to come in here and actually like fix some of this stuff manually 
if anything didn't have a material applied to the front face. So that's one thing to be aware of is make sure that you've paid a lot of attention to this, especially if you're pulling in 3D warehouse models. So another thing to be aware of with quantities is right now, for example, this cinder block material is actually going to give me double the material that I need, right? And the reason for that is because assuming this is a single wife CMU wall, right? So we're just gonna use one side of block. I don't need this applied to both sides in here. What this is doing is this is actually pulling materials from the end, the back, and the top, which is more material than I actually need, right? Because you're really just gonna come in here and just stack blocks on one side. So we're reporting too much area in here. And so what I would have to do if I was trying to actually report out the areas is either apply like a default material to these right here, so it's not doubling up, which you could do, so if I apply that default material and then refresh this, notice how my cinder block material is going to come down like this to 29 square feet. So now my square footage would be correct. So that's another thing to be aware of is just look at the way things are modeled. Usually if you're using your model for quantification like this, you only wanna use a single thickness face um, for the actual material quantification itself. But notice how this is also giving me things like uh, the concrete aggregate or the concrete sidewalk in here. So I can pull that area out really quickly. And note that there are options in here to print this to PDF. And that's going to look something like this. I pulled these out of a different model, but you can print um, a report or you can also export this to an Excel file if you're working in a spreadsheet. And so one other thing to be aware of if you're trying to get any kind of quantities out of a SketchUp model is you need to pay attention to if things are running through ground planes. And so let's say, for example, that I was going to build this wall. And I'm assuming it's going to be some kind of a concrete wall um, that runs through the ground. So it's going to have a concrete footer, all of that, but then it's going to have brick cladding on the upside of the surface. Well, if you look at the way this is drawn, that looks fine right now. If I click on it, it's going to give me a quantity of 75 feet. But if I move down like this, notice how this has been drawn all the way through the ground. So I've got all this additional brick that's in here. And that additional brick is something where I, I'm not gonna put brick cladding on a concrete wall below ground, right? So right now I'm over reporting areas. And so one of the things you might do is you might right click on this object and do an intersect faces with model. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna split this object where it interfaces, but you might actually come in here and we'll go ahead and unhide this, but for the below grade, you might have a different material, right? So for this one, you might have like a concrete material or something like that, um, just so that you know that you're reporting this in properly and you're getting the areas that you need. And then those are gonna show up in your report areas tool, but you just need to be really careful with how materials are applied in SketchUp models and how you pull quantities out so that you don't either miss something or carry way too much. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything that we talked about. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.